Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Tuesday. We have a really exciting activity for you today. Hello, hello. Welcome. You can see me wave back. Yay. All right. I'm seeing some very excited faces. Hello, friends. So excited. I'm just going to give it another minute or so to let a few more people join our session with us today, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Super excited to have you guys here. Hopefully it's nice and warm and sunny and pretty where you are. If not, that's okay. This activity is going to definitely brighten your day right up because it's definitely going to brighten up mine. Hello. Hi. Waving back at y'all. All right. We're just going to give it a couple more seconds. We're going to jump right in. I hope you guys are ready. You have all your slime making materials. You have some storage containers that we have your emoji cutouts ready. And if not, don't worry. We're going to talk through what else you can do. But uh, really excited to have you guys here today. And we're going to go ahead and get started in just a second. Hello to everyone who's still joining. Welcome. Oh, I see some glue. All right, if you have some glue, show it up. Show me in the camera. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm seeing a lot of clear glue, some white glue. All right. Ooh, a gallon. You guys are prepared. Glow in the dark. Yay! You guys are ready to get into the slime. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Courtney. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. So this is another awesome Kids Club online session from Michaels, as you guys know. So Michaels is actually partnered up with Elmer's, as you can see here, for a whole week of super awesome crafting and slime making activities. So today we're going to be making a super fun, crunchy slime. Uh, it's a spring slime recipe, and we're also going to be making an emoji decorated slime container. You can use a jar, a sandwich bag. We'll go through the ingredients. Don't worry. But um, I just want to let you guys know that we are so excited to be here with you. So I work on the Elmer slime team. So basically my whole job, get this, is to make and play with slime. It's pretty cool. I mean, I love it. So I'm so excited to be here with you and share my love for slime with you all. Um, just to give a quick reminder, so this video today is going to be recorded. You can find it on michaels.com at just www.michaels.com slash classes. So if you realize you're missing an ingredient today or you just love this slime so much you want to remake it and you want to use the instructions again, the video will be posted tomorrow. So no worries if you are missing something today. Again, you can definitely do it again tomorrow. Bring a friend, bring another family member, whatever you want. And so yesterday we did, um, Elmer's partner with Michaels to do a rolled paper flower art. It was really cute. Um, I feel like I saw some of you guys there yesterday. My friend Jonathan let it. Um, if you guys didn't get to do that activity, you can find that on michaels.com. Um, you go to www.michaels.com slash classes. Uh, we also are going to be doing some other classes the rest of this week. So tomorrow, my friend Jonathan again is going to come back and he's going to make a rainbow salt art canvas. It's going to be this beautiful textured beautiful rainbow. If you guys haven't signed up for that, definitely make sure to do so. I actually will be back on Thursday to make a twinkle star slime recipe. And I'm also going to show you guys some super cool slime tricks, like how to make a slime bubble. Uh, hopefully that works, as well as a the signature slime swirl that makes really awesome bubble pops. So I'm really excited to see you guys again on Thursday. And then on Friday, my friend Alex, who is our crafting master, is going to show you how to make a foam rocket ship that is absolutely out of this world. You guys don't want to miss it. If you want to sign up for any of these classes and you haven't yet, you can also find those on Michael's website at www.michaels.com slash kids club online. So as we go through today, if you have a parent or an older sibling, a guardian around, grandma, whoever, if someone has a social media account, definitely make sure to take pictures of your projects, your slime, your slime container, put it online, do hashtag make it with Michael's and then also tag at Elmer's products so we can see all your awesome creations online. So without further ado, let's get into the craft. So I'm going to show you all of the ingredients that we have here. So we're going to first start by making our slime container. So this you can see here, um, you can see it in this camera angle here is our slime container. You can see we're going to make really fun, super cool emoji designs off of it. And then we're going to make a crunchy slime that's inspired by spring. I just took out a piece here, super glittery very pigmented. It's got really cool pony beads in it, makes really nice bubble pops, um, and it's going to be super fun. So hopefully you guys are excited and ready. Um, so what you're going to need for this is pretty simple. So you need some sort of slime storage container. 
You can see here, I'm using just this simple eight ounce jar. It's just plain, if you guys have one of those, we'll go ahead and use that. And if not, um, that's okay. You can always go to michaels.com to purchase one and do this activity again. Or if you have one, I will also show you how to use, transform your simple uh, sandwich bag into an emoji design here. So either or works, whatever you guys have available. Um, if you also have these printed out, you can go ahead and use these. These are found with today's um, instructions, but this is the emoji cutouts that if you want to trace, um, I'm not great at drawing, so I'm going to be cutting these out and tracing these. If you are like, I can draw, you're just going to draw directly on your sign computer, whatever design you want. But today I'll show you how to cut these out and trace these designs, which we'll need scissors and tape for, and we'll also need uh, paint markers. So I'm using these paint markers here. You can use any kind of marker that's going to color. Any other paint marker too will work. If you are using a paint marker, I'll show you. You'll need to shake them a bit. We'll talk through that. Um, but it leaves this really nice pigmented color on your, on your jar. So that's what I'll be using today. And so that's going to be the first part of our class. We're going to be showing how to make these different storage containers. And then from there, we're going to move into the extra fun slime making, to which you'll need your bottle of glue. I'll be using Elmer's clear glue today. Um, if you have your glue, we're going to use these. If not, again, you can find any glue you want to use with this at michaels.com. From there, I'm going to show two different ways to activate your slime. So I'm going to use baking soda and contact lens solution first. If you guys have that, I'll show you how to make it with this solution, a very safe, easily uh, way to make slime. And then also I'm going to be showing it with Elmer's Magical Liquid, which is another safe way to make slime. So if you've got that, I'll show you that. And then we're going to make our slime extra fun, right? We love clear slime, don't get me wrong, but we're going to add some color. So I have some food coloring that I will be adding. You can use any color you want. You can use any type of food coloring you want. You may have a drop style. I have a kind of paste here. So I have my craft stick to apply. And then we're going to use glitter. So I've got this beautiful palette of glitter. I'm so excited. I'm still not sure which color I'm going to pick. Maybe you guys can help me. And then we have our beads. So I am using pony beads today. They're really thick, just a plastic bead. You can use foam beads or you can skip the beads altogether. It's totally up to you. The only rule is to have fun. I'm just gonna show you a guideline on how to make slime, but there's no right or wrong. As long as you were having fun, that is all I care about. So I'm gonna pause there. Um, Raina, is there any questions up front with the ingredients that we wanna talk about really fast? Yeah, so we've got some kids asking if they can use cups to contain their slime. Absolutely, you can definitely use a cup. Um, we like to use something that has a lid or something on it to help keep the slime a little bit fresh for a little bit longer, but you can definitely use a cup, um, no problem at all. Uh, some are asking if they can use emoji stickers instead of the cutouts. Yes, 100%. You can put any kind of sticker you want. Definitely today's theme is emoji. But if you have any stickers, you can add whatever you want. You can also, you can cut out these cutouts and you can color them in and turn them into a sticker yourself if that's what you have. You don't have actual stickers. There's tons of options to make this container your own. Gotcha. Um, do they need glitter? No, definitely not. I'm a big glitter fan. Some people don't like glitter. If you want to go just straight color, straight beads, absolutely. More power to you. Perfect. Not and can they use foam beads? Yes, I love foam beads too. Um, they give, the foam beads give a really nice crackle sound when you pull it apart, whereas these add a little bit more texture when you swish it between yourself, but they're both crunchy slimes and they're both super fun. So I see a lot of different beads on my screen and they all look fabulous. So I'm so excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, some of the kits do not have contact lens solution. Is there any substitute for that? So we recommend contact lens solution or magical liquid. There are some, um, other recipes that you may be able to find online. However, we recommend one of these methods as it's the safest for kids and for kids' hands. So if you do not have contact lens solution or magic liquid today, we would recommend that you go to michaels.com and maybe try this activity at another point in time once you're able to get a nice, safe, activated solution for your kid. Awesome. Um, and they're asking, do they need a bowl? Do they see the bowl off to the side? I think you just need some sort of container to mix your glue in. It can be a cup, it can be a bowl. Um, you can even use your slime container. Maybe you don't pour your whole bottle in at once because that could be a little messy, but you just need something to hold your glue in to make your slime. But it can look however you want it. I have a nice big bowl here, but your bowl can look very different from mine. I would just keep it plastic that may stick the less, uh, stick, stick the least versus like a paper bowl, but um, you can make anything work. 
Gotcha. And there's um, someone asking if they can use the crunchy slime activator that came in the Elmer's kit. Absolutely, you can. That's going to be the easiest way to get a crunchy slime. So uh, what you will do is, well, um, I'm using my magic liquid here. You would use the crunchy magic liquid and you just won't add the beads at the end because you'll already have your, your slime crunchy. So that is a very simple way to do it as well. Absolutely. Perfect. And glitter glue instead of glitter. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Another perfect way. Awesome. I think we're good for now, but I will let you know if I get any more. Okay. Awesome. Well, let's dive right into the fun. You know what? Actually, before we do that, we're going to make this extra fun. We're going to have some fun facts and some really fun questions for you guys along the way. So the first one, and this isn't meant to be a trick question, but can you guys go ahead and put in the chat and Raina's going to tell me what you guys think. What is the animal that is Elmer, who is in our Elmer's logo? What do you guys think? I want you to go ahead and, and put that in the chat. Uh, and then Raina, you want to just read out some answers. I'm going to clear my space and I'm going to go ahead and start with my jar. So I'm going to take my piece of the paper and we're going to start cutting them out. So I'm just going to move I am seeing cow, bull, I'm seeing a buffalo, a goat. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing lots of bull and cow. Okay. Interesting. Um, there's another goat. A yak. Oh, gosh, you guys know more animals than <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. This is great. So Elmer is actually a bull. So congrats to everyone who thought he was a bull. He is. Um, I'm going to give you half of a fun fact. I'm not going to spoil this whole next fact because I think we may give you another fact in another Michaels video that you'll have to come back and watch. But Elmer, the bull, is actually married to a cow. So for those of you who guessed cow, you're not totally wrong. He, he is married to a cow, but I'm not going to tell you anything about this cow because it may come up at a later point in time. So you guys will have to check back with us. All right, so now we're going to go here into our cutouts. So what I want you guys to do is if you have scissors and you have a printout, or if you have emoji stickers or whatever you plan on using, if you plan on coloring directly on these sheets, I want you to pick the emoji that you feel today with being in this class. And I want you to go ahead and cut that one out. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to think for a second. How do I feel about making this crunchy slime? And once you figure that out, you're going to go ahead and cut it out. I'm going to cut a couple of these out since I'm going to show you a couple different ways. If you can see here, I actually was able to fit a total of three different emojis in my jar. So you guys are more than welcome to do more than one. I'm probably going to just for the sake of time today do one emoji for my jar and one for my sandwich bag, but you guys can definitely, as I'm showing both methods, do multiple versions. And also, as you can see here, I'm not really great at cutting straight lines. That is okay. The whole purpose is to, like I said, have fun. And then outside of that, the great thing about tracing is that if my lines aren't straight, that's okay, because as long as I can see the black line, I'm going to get the general shape that I want, and that's really all that matters at the end of the day. This one, I'm going to pick this one. So we're just going to cut out a couple of emojis again. If you're using a jar, you can use up to three emojis. You can do one, you can do two. You can go crazy and do none. You can color your own design, whatever is how you're feeling today with this slime class is what I want to see. All right, so I'm going to stay here. So now that I've cut out my shape, these are the shapes that I picked. I want to see what you guys, which, how are you feeling about your slime today? I want to see which emojis that you guys are picking. Let me see. All right, we got a couple different ones here. Some of you are like me. Some of you picked out some of the ones I haven't picked. They're all great, right? We're all just like super excited. I'm like super hard eyes about this because I'm really excited to be here and just a big smile because that's just how I am. So once you guys are ready, we're going to go ahead and take these and now we're going to get to actually putting them on the inside of this jar. So now I'm going to take my tape. I'm going to take my pieces and I'm going to flip them over so that they're facing down on my table. And that's because when I open up my jar, since I want to trace the outline, you want it to stick that way your, your face is facing out like this. Um, so I'm gonna have these facing down on my table. I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna basically just put a nice line of tape all the way around. You can see here, almost like sticking it to my table. So that way it'll stick to the inside of my jar nicely. 
So you can use as much or as little tape as you want. Raina, do you have any questions about this section so far? Sorry, I was muted. Um, so can they color their emoji any color? Does it have to be yellow? Can they do blue? It definitely can be blue. It can be rainbow. It does not have to be yellow. I chose yellow, just straight traditional, but I want to see what you guys come up with. You guys are more creative than me. That's why you're here. <laughs> so I definitely want to see whatever you guys come up with. There is no right or wrong. Gotcha. Can, can they use food coloring gels for color? You can. It would be a little bit messy, so I would just be careful with your hands because it may, food coloring may stay your, your fingers. So just be a little careful. Make sure if you have a, a guardian around <laughs> that they can help with cleanup. But you can definitely color however you want. You can use, if you want to um, just like tape these on the outside instead of tracing them on the inside, you can just color with whatever you have, any kind of marker. You can use crayons, colored pencils, and just you can tape them on the outside. That's definitely an option too. So totally up to you. Awesome. And then do they have to put their, can, their slime in the jar? Can they just make a jar? You can just make a jar. Yeah, this, you can store anything in this jar. This does not have to be for slime. If you want to store it in it, great. If not, you can put whatever you want. You can just have it as a decoration. Just make as many jars as you want. You can have a whole shelf of just cool jars that you've created. There's no limit on creativity. These are great questions. So hopefully you guys have all cut out and taped your shape. So the next thing we're gonna do, so I'm gonna take my jar here and I'm gonna actually, now that my tape is facing forward, I'm gonna stick it on the inside here. So you can see it's gonna stick a little bit on the way. That's okay. I'm gonna wanna basically try to press it along here so the tape looks like this, yeah? So it's now stuck on the inside. So now when I have my markers, I can actually trace on the outside of my jar to get this effect at the end. So I'm just going to do one here. Like I said, I'm going to save this guy for my sandwich bag. Oops, the tape's stuck. <laughs> um, we're going to save this for my sandwich bag. So sandwich bag, folks, we'll come back in just a second. Or you know what? I'll just show it to you now. So if you have a sandwich bag method, what you're going to do is you're going to open up your sandwich bag and you're actually going to pull it inside out. So that way, again, it's easier to trace. So now that my bag is inside out, we're just going to fluff it up there. You're going to do the same exact thing that I just did with the jar, except it's actually a little bit easier. You're just going to lay your sandwich bag flat, the right side up, and you're just going to press your emoji straight onto the inside. And then when you turn your bag inside out again, now you have your traceable emoji. So very simple. Like I said, you don't need to trace anything. You can just color directly onto whatever your surface is. Um, but I'll show you how to color these next. So. Does everyone have their jar ready? Can I see everybody's jar or bag? Okay, these are looking great. Looks like you guys have it down. So now that we have our emoji placed where we want it to color, we're gonna go ahead and color it in. So like I said, I'm using paint markers. So if you have a paint marker, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take whatever color you want. I'm gonna start with blue. And for paint markers specifically, you have to shake it really, really well actually to get it to work. Um, and you'll see, so once there's color in that front part there, you're good to go. So I'm going to take my cup and I'm just going to start coloring. So I'm going to make the eyes blue. So where the eyes are here, I'm going to color right over. And you can see the nice thing about these paint markers is now I actually can't see the black that I'm tracing because the color is nice and thick. So that helps me because I, like I said, I'm not great at drawing. <laughs> uh, so this is really helpful to me to have a nice template that I can color. But again, since if you love to draw and you just want to color, you want to go rogue, please go ahead, just make a crazy design. I'm going to see them all at the end. So uh, I'm very excited to see what you guys come up with. I'm going to continue to color here. I'm going to color my eyes. And once you take the, the tracing paper out from the inside of your jar, we'll be able to clean up any lines or any edges at the end as well. So now I have my eyes. I'm going to move into the mouth. So I like to color the inside parts first. So that way that part starts to dry and my hand isn't smearing everything on the outside, but you can color it in whatever order you would like. I'm gonna go with my mouth next. I'm gonna take my black. Make this up good. Now I'm gonna trace the outline here. Best I can. Can they use Sharpies instead of paint markers? 
You definitely can. You definitely can. The color may not, depending on which color you use, it may not look exactly the same as my colors here, but you can definitely use a sharpie marker. Whatever you have. Or can they use regular paints? You can use paint. Again, it may take a little bit longer to dry. So if you are going to use paint or even a sharpie that may smudge, um, it may be nice to have like a plate or like a paper plate or a napkin or something beneath you so that way as it dries, it's not going to stain your, your surface just in case. But that's just a helpful, uh, friendly note. So we're going to finish color this same here. Color around the edges. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to color that in. It's going to look really cool when you take the paper out from the inside. It's very satisfying, actually. All right. That looks pretty much like we're not there. OK. So now we have mouth outline. I'm going to color in the teeth. Is any part that you leave clear and you don't color in, your slime is going to show through. So if we compare again to this one, you can see here, since I colored in the black completely, or this one here, since I colored in the white, the slime doesn't show through. Whereas if I leave anything clear like this part here, you'll see the slime through. So again, totally up to you. If you want your teeth to be the same color as your slime, let it go. You do that. <laughs> That'll be really cool to have extra sparkly teeth. I would like that. That'd be pretty fun. Oops. I'm going to color this emoji's teeth in. We've got kids asking if the paint on the jar will stain your hands if you pick it up. Do you need to wait for it to dry? For these paint markers, they dry pretty quickly. I would avoid touching it um, and let it dry, but it dries actually pretty quickly if you're using a paint marker like this one here. If you're using regular paint, depending on the paint that you're using, it may stain. So I would definitely try to avoid touching that directly with your hands um, and because that could stain. Um, in, this, in a similar way that food coloring can stain, it, can, it, it will eventually come out, you know, with warm soapy water, but um, if you don't want the color of the paint that you're using on your jar to then impact the color of your slime, um, I would just try to avoid touching the paint as best you can, but it's okay. It will eventually come off. So no big worries there. So to finish this up, I am going to finish coloring my emoji. Again, I'm going to do yellow for all of you blue emoji fans. You're going to use blue, so we're just going to be different here, and that is okay. So again, I'm just going to trace the outline here. So while we're doing this, I want to know um, when you guys get a second and a break from coloring, I'm just curious, before we start making our slime, what is your favorite slime to make or to play with. You know, we're making a crunchy slime today that has glitter in it. There are tons of other slimes I'm sure you guys know, like fluffy slime, butter slime. Go ahead and put in the chat and Raina's gonna help me out on what you guys are answering. What kind of uh, slime is your favorite to play with and then why? Very excited to hear what you guys have to say. I'm seeing fluffy, fluffy. butter, galaxy. Ooh, that's crunchy. Fun. Yeah, glossy, glow in the dark. Yeah. Oh, yep. So cloud. Clouds. Cloud. Love cloud. Those are so, isn't that the coolest part about slime is that like there's just so many different types and every slime is unique. And that is just the coolest part. They all have something new. Yes. Color changing. Ooh. Color changing. Jelly slime. Ooh, jelly is so cool with those little foam pieces in them. Mm -hmm. Fake snow slime. Ooh, almost like a snow fizz. Those are really fun. Gives a nice crackle texture. Love it, guys. You guys are definitely slime experts. You know all the cool, you know all the cool stuff. I don't need to tell you. Scented slime. Ooh, scented. Love apple scent. It really makes slime fully dimensional. Like I said earlier, I heard everything about slime from kids just like you guys. <laughs> um, you guys experts. I mean, we, I just love watching you guys make and play with slime. So I'm really excited. We have someone asking you what your favorite slime is to make. Ah, uh, that's a great question. So my slime, my favorite slime has to be butter slime. I don't know. There's something about just that really smooth texture and like 
I remember the first time I ever made it, I definitely did not do it right at all. It was a definite fail. Um, and then when I finally got the recipe right and I was able to just press my fingers into it and it had that really nice smooth lay down, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is just the coolest thing ever. I definitely just, uh, I love that. But I also really like crunchy slime because I do like that crackly ASMR sense to it and, and the sound that it gets when you pull it apart. I find that so satisfying and just so cool at the same time. Those are probably my top two. What's the first slime you ever made? Um, just, you know, a regular slime. <laughs> just like a bottle of, I think I used glitter glue um, and baking soda and contact lens solution. Um, I definitely way overactivated my slime. It was super rubbery. It was really not very fun to play with. I didn't understand why kids liked it so much. So it took a lot of practice and watching you guys' videos um, to figure out how to actually learn to like slime. And then once I got it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. I want to do this all the time. And uh, thankfully, I get to do just that. So that's my slime journey. <laughs> when, when was your first slime experience? Gosh, that was when um, I joined this really awesome Elmer's team in January of 2018. So a little over, gosh, two and a half years now. And what a ride it's been. With that, here's my little emoji. Hopefully you guys are finished. If you guys have finished coloring in your emojis, will you guys show me really fast so I can see? Okay. Got some really awesome creative slime containers right now. They look great. Um, what I'm gonna do really fast is just show, so when you actually are done coloring in your emoji, you can go ahead and go back on the inside of your jar and pull out that piece that you were tracing, and voila. Now it's just permanently on there and you have your emoji ready to go. So the process is gonna be the same for your sandwich bag, for those of you who weren't doing it. Um, we're just gonna quickly color this one in so it's ready to go. So I have my heart eye emoji here. I'm just gonna quickly color it in and then we'll get into everyone's favorite part, the slime making. Yay. And do they, um, do it has to be an emoji or can they just like doodle on their you jars or their sandwich bags? I encourage you to doodle. I wanna see all the doodles. Like that is, I'm just uh, using emojis here today because we have these really cool printouts that I thought were really cute, um, but definitely doodle whatever you want. I really wanna see all of your creations. Um, they can be emoji based or not. You wanna draw, you wanna try and draw Elmer, you wanna draw slime, a glue bottle. I mean, you wanna just draw yourself, do it up. I'm excited. All right, so I'm gonna quick finish out my mouth here. I actually kinda of feel like the sandwich bag is a little bit easier because it's flat you guys saw me struggling on the rounded surface. That's okay. It still came out really cute. I'm very pleased with it. In my mouth. Now I'm going to finish my emoji and then we will be good to go. And if you guys do have any more questions, continue to send them to Raina. We will get them answered. Will the Sharpie paint markers work the same? Will they work the same? As the paint markers you're using? Yes, so I actually am using Sharpie paint markers. Um, oh, perfect. So it should look, hopefully, <laughs> exactly like this one, um, if this is what you choose to use. Um, I will note again, though, the ones that I'm using are oil-based and not, there are water-based Sharpie paint markers. The ones that we are recommending um, in this specific instance is the oil-based one. And that's just based on the type of materials that we're coloring on. We think it holds the color the best. All right, it's coming along. Very excited. Do you have, do you do YouTube videos about making slime? I do not actually, um, that's a funny you, question. You just watch them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I just watch them. I got to give credit where it's due. And you guys are the creators here. I am just simply a, a learner. I'm, I'm here to teach you guys maybe some ways to make slime a little bit easier potentially, or um, maybe a little less messy in some cases, but uh, that is the extent of uh, my video <laughs> making when it comes to slime. So now that I have my sandwich bag completed, I'm going to take the paper out of here just to see what it looks like. 
if I can get the tape off. Let's see. Yeah. And I'm just taking the paper out of this so that way um, when you put the slime in at the end, the slime will stick to the paper and the, or rather the paper is going to stick to your slime, which will probably give the slime a pretty negative texture. So I'm just going to pull the paper out now so I don't forget to do so at the end. Same with the tape. Just we want the slime to be as in perfect condition as possible. All right, so there's the other container. All right, so if there are no more questions about this kind of container setup section, I think it's time that we move into the real fun stuff, which is the slime. So I'm going to move this stuff again out of the way and I'm going to grab my bowl. So whatever you are using to mix your slime in, if it's a cup, if it's a bowl, um, if you're going to use a spoon or a spatula, whatever you're going to use, go ahead and grab that now. And we're going to go ahead and grab our glue. So since I will be putting my slime in a an eight ounce container, I'm going to use a five ounce bottle of glue. I did see some of you had a whole gallon of glue. Um, in this specific rendition, we're just going to make a single bottle's worth. So just pour in a little bit of your gallon at a time. Um, you want to make sure that it's going to fit in our container. Um, so just be mindful of that. Um, but I'm just going to, I am going to show you just how to make slime with eyeballing your activators, because that's how I like to make my slime, because I think everyone likes to make slime differently. But I'll show you the ways to test and make sure your slime is ready to be handled and touched um, as we go. So there won't be any specific measurements that you need to necessarily follow. I'll tell you what measurements to use if you would like to. Um, but so if you have a little bit more or a little bit less glue than me because you're pouring from a larger container, that's okay. Don't, don't write about that. So go ahead and take your glue, take the top off. I'm going to squeeze the entire bottle into my bowl. This is your first step. It's going to make some kind of funny noises. Um, that's okay. And you don't have to get all of the glue out of the bottle. I usually let it sit for a little bit. You can see some more glue is still kind of coming out. Um, you may not get every last drop. That's okay. I try to get a lot of it out just because I like more slime, but you can cut it off whenever you want. Once you got a good amount, I'm just going to put the top on so it's a little less messy and put it over to the side. So what we're going to do next before we actually turn our glue into slime is we're going to add the color. So if you have a food color that you would like to use, I'm going to take mine um, and we're going to go ahead and add that in now. So I have this really cool like icy blue color that I'm going to use. Um, just note that the more color you add, the more pigmented and darker your slime is going to be. So if you remember from my finish here. I put a lot of coloring in when I made this, so it's a really dark color. I'm going to try to make it a little bit lighter today so we can really see the beads go through, but you can add as much as little color as you would like. I'm going to take my craft stick and just have a little bit here and I'm just going to mix it right in. Looks like I did not add any less color than I did yesterday, but that's okay. I'm just going to mix it in and what you want to do is you want to mix it in so it's completely mixed in. You want to try to not have any clear slime left. And that's just so that way when you do turn this into your slime, your slime is already very mixed through um, and evenly colored. Mix that in really good. How much glue did you use? Was it five ounces? I used a five ounce bottle of glue. Yes. That's because I'm using clear glue. If you have, for those of you that have white glue um, that I saw, you can you'll use, a, it'll be a four ounce bottle. If you have a glitter glue, it'll be six ounces. It's all roughly the same. So either of those um, are good to use as well. I'm gonna take my craft stick and put it to the side. Now that I have my color, now it's time to activate. So first I'm gonna show you how to make this recipe using baking soda and contact lens solution. So I have baking soda here. What we recommend if you have a teaspoon, you can go ahead and use that and add a teaspoon's worth into your bowl and mix it. Um, it doesn't need to be a perfect science. The baking soda is really just help is really just meant to help the contact lens solution, the active ingredient in that bond with the uh, the glue. So it's okay if you have a, if you add a little more, a little less. I'm just going to shake some in here, just like that, um, and we're going to just call that a day. So once you add that, we are going to mix it in again completely into our glue. So all of the baking soda powder is fully mixed in. Once we do that, it's time to actually activate. So I'm going to take my contact lens and again, so if, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask if they have a nine ounce jar or whatnot, do they use a little bit more? Yep. 
you can use you can use a little bit more. Um, it, honestly, adding too much baking soda isn't going to make much of a difference. So it's okay if you use a little more or a little less. Again, it's just going to help um, make the bonds a little bit tighter between the actual like chemicals in the glue and the uh, and the contact solution. But it's okay. It, it doesn't need to be perfect. You can just add a little extra shake. It won't hurt it. <laughs> Thank you. So for your contact lens solution, so again, I'm just going to show what it looks like to make the slime without measuring, because sometimes you don't have teaspoons or tablespoons, or maybe you do, but whoever you're living with or whoever's house you're at right now doesn't want you to use them and to dirty them up with contact lens solution, and that's okay. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to just add some in a little bit at a time and stir, and we'll be able to talk through and watch the process of the glue turn into the slime. And I'll give you some tips and tricks that I use to test to make sure the slime is ready before you like dive in with your full hands, which you are more than welcome to do at any point in time. I prefer to keep, I want to try to teach you guys how to do it maybe in a little less messy way. If that's something that I was always frustrated you, that you always go in, you touch your slime a little too early. Um, we'll talk about ways to hopefully help with that. But if you want, you can also um, use a teaspoon, I would recommend, and just add a teaspoon at a time um, instead of eyeballing it if that makes you feel more comfortable. So again, for baking soda, I would add about a teaspoon's worth and then a teaspoon's worth at a time of your contact on solution. So I'm just gonna add a squirt just like that. And we're gonna start mixing it in. So I like my slime a little bit stickier, a little bit runnier. I think um, it, for me, uh, is a little bit more fun to play with personally. Now there's no right or wrong type of slime texture. So you keep adding more activator as you guys see fit if you know the type of consistency you're looking for. I will say for this recipe, since we're adding um, the beads and the glitter after we're making the slime, I also would say it may be a little bit helpful to be a little bit on the stickier side. So that way when you're mixing in the beads and the glitter, it actually holds it a little bit stronger. Um, but that's just a personal recommendation. So as you add in your contact lens solution, after each time, you're gonna to wanna to give it a really good stir. So you can see here, still looks pretty much like a glue solution. So definitely not ready to touch with your hands yet. Kind of like a jelly almost. Um, so this means it's time to add some more activator. But before I do that, so when we launch new products, right? Some of you mentioned like our Crunchy Magic Liquid, that's new. Um, we have like our new Elmer's pre-made slime or Elmer's goo line. I'm curious what you guys think. So we have chemists that work in a lab and their whole job is to help us make these really cool products, but they also have to test them before we ever let you guys play with them to make sure they're safe and they're, you know, fun. So how many slimes do you think that they have to test and play with before you guys ever, ever get to see them? Go ahead and send that in the chat. And then Raina, I'm curious to hear what people think. Yeah, I've got 100, 20, 50, 1,000, 312, 400, 57, 500, yep. 20,000. Oh, goodness. 20,000? We'd still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Someone's asking uh, do they have to use baking soda if they have a slime activator bottle? Do not. You do not. Um, and even if you're using contact lens solution, you don't need to use baking soda. Um, it, it helps speed up the process a little bit, but it's not necessary. And then if you are using an activator like our magical liquid, which I'll show you right after this, um, you do not need baking soda or contact lens solution. So no, it's not necessary. Gotcha. So you can see here, uh, this is still kind of slimy. I'll answer my own question in a second here. So I just add another squirt again, just like a one, two. And we're going to mix this in thoroughly. You want to keep mixing. Eventually, the slime is going to stick to itself and not the bowl. That's the ultimate goal. That's when you know, all right, this is ready for me to touch it. So you can see it's starting to get a little bit thicker. Um, I always say this is a great shoulder workout. Um, I definitely <laughs> feel my arm muscles completely engaged. Um, it's starting to turn more into a taffy here, um, but still super sticky. So we're going to add more. And the reason why I like to add a little bit at a time again is just, I like to keep my slime, I feel like it's easier to mix it all the way through your slime when you add a little bit at a time as opposed to adding a whole bunch at once. I find that is 
personally difficult. Um, I think your slime texture ultimately is a little bit more consistent when you add a little bit of time. So as you can see here, it's starting to pick up off the side of my bowl. So I'm getting kind of close, but it still looks very sticky to me. So I'm gonna just add a little squirt. Mix this in again. See how it's starting to come off the bowl kind of on itself? I'm not really doing much to it. That's a good sign. That means it's about ready. So ultimately, you're gonna need to go in with your hands and knead this slime. That's just unavoidable. That's really kind of the fun. So what I like to do at this point, since it's starting to come off my bowl, I don't want to get my hands totally messy yet. So I'm just going to go in with one finger and do that and see how it's very much sticking to me. That means the whole thing is going to stick to my hand. So I'm going to add a little bit more. That's kind of my like teaser test there just to see, because if it sticks to one finger, it's definitely going to stick to my whole palm if I go to grab it. So I'm going to mix that in a little bit more. Try to pick some of it off the sides here. Now it's kind of cleaning my bowl for me, which is super fun. I love this part. Helps whoever does the dishes in your house. And so now that it's pretty much one ball of slime, I'm gonna go in again with one finger, and now it's not sticking as much. So I can grab it with two hands. It's a little tacky, but it's really sticky, uh, really just to itself and less to me. It's a little tacky, but that's okay because we're going to knead it in. So now I'm going to go in with my hand and I'm going to slowly like pull it up just a couple of fingers. Again, just trying to see where it's feeling really sticky. And I'm just kind of pulling and pressing it into itself. Um, so that way it's, it starts to use kind of those like natural oils in your fingers um, to make it a little less sticky and get your hands used to the texture of the slime as well. You see, I'm just kind of touching it here. And once I feel like that has gone well, it's still a little sticky to me. I'm going to personally just add a little squirt on top. I'm going to press that in here. Fold it in. And now it has that nice slime sound, which means it's not sticking to my fingers. So now I think it's time I can pick it up and finish the mixing process. It's going to stick a little bit at first. That's normal. And if it continues to stick really badly, you just keep adding a little bit of activator at a time. See how it's like, ooh, a little so sticky. That's okay. Try to get it in one hand if that's necessary and just add another little squirt right on top. And then we're gonna fold it into itself. It's not a perfect science. I see some of you are already like, my slime is perfect. <laughs> Here it looks like a hot mess, um, which is not not true. Like I said, I like to keep mine a little bit stickier, but now it's starting to come off my fingers itself, which is good. Are there any other what? questions so far? Yeah. yeah. What, um, what if the slime feels a little stiff? Stiff? Then I wouldn't add any more activator to it. The more activator you add, um, the less sticky it'll be, but it'll also become a little bit more stiff and a little less stretchy maybe. Um, and that's okay. That's also a great slime. Like I said, there is no right or wrong with the slime texture. It just depends on what you're looking for. Um, so I like mine a little bit stickier, a little bit runnier, but if yours is stiff, then you probably don't need any more activator. Um, as long as it's not sticking to you is ultimately the goal that you want here. And it should be able to kind of, you know, I'm cleaning my fingers off here. Um, once it gets to that point, I would say that's good. I'm gonna leave mine a little bit stickier so I can add my glitter in the next. Did they, if it feels foamy, should they add more glue? Um, I would just keep mixing with your hands. I wouldn't add more glue um, if it's foamy. Yeah, I, I would just keep mixing it in. Sometimes when your, your activator gets a little foamy, it kind of coats the outside of your slime. And what you want to do is probably really squish it between your fingers. That way it mixes to like the inside of the slime. Sometimes the activators like to just make a really nice firm outside, but the inside of the slime can be pulled and then squished together to really make like a nice even uh, slime texture. That, that would be my recommendation at that point. Anything else? Is everyone? Go ahead. Their slime is still gooey. They need to add, do they need to add more activator? I would, yes. If your slime is still gooey, if you're not able to like poke it and your fingers come off clean like this, I would continue to add a little bit of activator at a time, like a dime size worth, just a little bit like this. Again, if you do have a measuring utensil, I would add a teaspoon at a time um, and probably not much more. Gotcha. And does purple Elmer's glue work? 
um, they are, seem to have a little bit of a discoloration and it, they said it's not forming into slime. If it is the, if it says disappearing purple on the front and it's a liquid glue, that's actually not used for slime. Um, our purple glitter glue or a purple translucent glue, like I have this one here, if you have this in purple, it will turn into slime. But if it says disappearing purple on the front, that actually um, will not turn into slime. I guess that's a fun fact. That is strictly supposed to be for crafting and gluing purposes. Good to know. Is there anything they can do to, if, the, if it's stiff, to make it back into more liquidy or more stretchy? Yeah. Yep, so you could add glue. It's a little bit of a messy way to do it. Honestly, what I would do is I would let it sit and don't touch it. The more you need it, the more your slime is actually going to activate. Um, so you would just want to let it sit for a little bit and then it'll actually over time, if you leave it even just in a bowl like this and don't put it in a closed container, it'll soften up. So for the sake of time, I'm going to move into glitter. So if you do have glitter, you can go ahead and add it now. I am going to pick this pretty blue one here. I'm just going to cut my packet open and pour it right on top of my slime. Oh yeah, this is going to look pretty. Okay, and once you have your glitter on top, we're going to mix it in. So I'm going to just press it into my slime here um, a little bit, just like this. I think it looks so pretty. I'm going to take a little edge of the slime here, stretch it, pull it over, press it in. And that's just that way when I pick my slime up, um, it's more evenly mixed and less likely to kind of like make a mess everywhere. Just kind of roll it around, roll it in, stretch it around. And look, if your slime is still kind of sticky at this point, and you don't like it, you can still add activator at this point in your slime making process. So you can see here, I have a really pretty, blue spring glittery slime. It looks awesome. Can I see you guys' slime if you have them? Is there any way to prevent the glitter from getting on your hands when you're finished with your slime? I would say um, the more you need your slime, if it is a little bit stickier, um, you can see the glitter just came right off of my hands. Um, so and I'm picking it up here. So I would just say, let it sit for a little bit. Um, and I would actually use your slime as it gets a little bit stickier again, if, if you overactivate it, maybe a little bit in, in the first part, um, let it sit and then you can actually use your slime to pick up all the glitter off your fingers. That's me. <laughs> so the final step is gonna be to add our pony beads. So I'm gonna take a hand and just, or your foam beads, whichever kind of beads you're using. Now, we talked earlier and you were using magic liquid, you can skip this part because you have used the crunchy magic liquid in particular, because um, you won't need it. But since I just use my baking soda and contact lens solution, I'm gonna press my pony beads in and do the same thing I just did with the glitter. Mix them all around. You can hear the nice crunchy texture already. Oh yeah. And you can add as many or as little beads as you want. This is like probably the right amount of beads for me. It's nice and light and fluffy. You can hear, or I can hear the really nice sound. It makes really nice bubble pops. I am very happy with this slime. You guys have a completed crunchy slime, let me see. <laughs> Yay, they look so good! Look at you guys, I love all the colors. Got a lot of variety going on here, okay. These look professionally made, guys. I am very impressed. So now that you have your slime, you are good to play with it, or I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my container here. Um, I want to just quickly show you how to use the magic liquid to turn your slime into regular slime really fast. So I'm going to store this slime here. And if you wanted to use magic liquid and you were waiting, um, we can go ahead and start that step now. I'm going to store my slime here. I'm going to keep it nice and fresh. Um, and I'm going to take my other bottle of glue. I'm going to dump it back into this bowl. So if you missed some of the early slime making steps before, I'm just going to quickly show you how to do them again. I'm going to do the same process. We're just changing the activator part. Gonna add our glue. And since we're talking about glue that we're using to make slime here, if you have a second, I want you to put in the chat, and Raina's gonna let me know what you guys think. What is your favorite Elmer's glue to use when you're making slime? You know, we talked like some people said they like glow in the dark slime before, but 
what, what, are, what are the other types of glues that you guys like to use to make your favorite type of slime, whether it's a crunchy slime or a fluffy slime, whatever that may be. I'm gonna take my coloring again, because I'm gonna add some more color to this slime. I like the color I did before. And again, just gonna take a little bit of color. I'm gonna mix it in completely into my glue. And again, it's your color doesn't look like mine. That's perfectly fine. You see, this one looks a little bit lighter. I used a little bit less color. Again, you just wanna make sure the color is mixed thoroughly into your glue. That looks about done. I'm gonna take my craft stick out now, put that away. And so now we're back to the activating portion of the slime making. So before, at this point, we added in a little bit of baking soda and had you guys mix it in. Instead, I'm gonna show you how to use magical liquid. Um, so I have this big bottle here. <laughs> Yours may not look exactly like mine, that's okay. Um, but you're gonna take off the top and we're gonna do the same thing that we did with like the contact lens solution. We're gonna add about a teaspoon's worth at a time. So for me, I'm just gonna add a dollop here. You can see it's making like a little pool right here in the slime. Um, and I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna take my spatula again and mix it in. So we're gonna look for the same kind of cues we looked for before where the slime, you can see it looks a little bit different um, than it looked when we were using the baking soda contact on solution. It's gonna look a little bit more like a jelly um, in the beginning. It's like pretty jiggly. It looks actually pretty watery at this point. So definitely gonna add more. Um, but I'm gonna, we're gonna again look for the point in time where the slime starts to come together. It's starting to stick to itself and not to the bowl. And that's when we'll know again that we're gonna go in with a finger, touch it, see if, how it sticks to us, go in and squish it together. So gonna get to that point. So it's a very similar process, just using slightly different ingredients. So I added another dollop here. Give that a mix. And again, I would use like all your arm muscles that you have. I don't have many, so if I can do this, I know you can do this. <laughs> um, this is definitely my exercise for the day. And you're gonna keep stirring. I try to scrape it off the sides of the bowls the best I can. So it still looks pretty glue-like. Another little dollop here. This, you'll notice the solution is a little bit thicker. So it's okay if it looks like you're adding a little bit more than the contact lens solution did. You can see it's kind of at that same point now. It's starting to come together. A little bit jelly-like. Starting to look like the beginning of slime. And are there any questions about this magical liquid? Nope, um, just what to do if it's still runny. Um, you've got kids that are, they said it's a little stiff. I know we said to kind of put it Put it off to the side and just give it a, give it some yeah, time. Yeah, give it some rest. Yeah, because the more you mix it in, the more your slime will, basically the activator part, right? So the contact on solution, or in this case, the magic liquid, the more you mix it in, the more you're gonna squish it together with um, the part of the glue that, that links together and makes the slime. So if you let it sit, um, instead of continuing to mix it, that, that will help soften it up. And if your slime is runny, I would just continue to encourage you to add um, some more of your activator, whether it's this magical liquid that you can see I'm continuing to add because it's still kind of uh, gooey and not yet slime-like. Um, and I would just continue to keep adding it. Don't get frustrated. It definitely takes a while um, to mix in. And the slower you go, honestly, the better your slime can be. Like I said before, I like to add it a little bit at a time because I think that ultimately you get a more consistent slime texture at the end. Um, and I always feel like it's easier to add more than to add too much up front, and then um, it may not be the right texture that you want. So you can see here, it's starting to come together, starting to peel off sides like this. So I'm gonna go ahead, starting to unstick to my spatula here. So I'm gonna put that on the side. I'm gonna touch my slime. And this actually, you can see here, it's like not really sticking to me very much. So I'm going to try again, go in with a couple fingers, pull some of it up, squish it together just with my fingertips. And that's again, you can go in with your full hands. I just like to keep it a little um, less messy by not having my whole hand in with it at the beginning. So just kind of picking some of the sides up, holding it into itself. And this smells pretty good. It's a little bit runny. So I'm going to add just another little dollop. 
just on top, press that in. And so again, you just want to get to that point in time where you can pretty comfortably handle the slime and it not stick to you. And that's going to be your slime. Just going to quickly fold this into itself here. Squish it together. This is the fun part. I think so at least. So now it's coming off my fingers. I'm able to like pick it out of my fingers here where it was sticking before. And we have our base of our slime again. So you can repeat the same steps here. We can add some glitter to it. I'm gonna skip the glitter and just add some beads just to finish this one up because I wanna keep this one without glitter. So I'm just gonna add another handful of beads here and press those in and add a little bit more this time. You can see my color's a little different from the last one. I'm also not adding glitter to this one because I'm going to try it without glitter, see what it looks like. I'm just going to fold all my beads in. And here is my new crunchy slime without using baking soda and contact lens solution. If you made slime like this, can I see it? Can we see your finished slimes? Everyone hold them up. Smile. Yay. Oh, that looks so good, guys. These look awesome. I see some of you are still mixing. That's okay. Um, I love what you guys, ooh, guys, these look are looking so good. I see all those beads. The colors you guys picked are beautiful. They look so good. I hope you guys had so much fun and are really proud of yourselves. I had a blast teaching you guys how to make this. This is really the two slimes that I was going to show you how to make today. We made our emoji jar. Um, everyone's creations look so good. Thank you guys so much for coming to be here with me today. Again, this video is going to be recorded, so feel free to go back to michaels.com tomorrow um, to find this recording. Bring a friend, make it again um, if you enjoyed it. If you want, go back and sign up for one of the other Elmer's and Michael partnership videos for the rest of this week again. So tomorrow, that's going to be the Rainbow Salt Art Canvas. Thursday, I'll be making a Twinkle Star slime with slime tricks. And then Friday, we're going to have a foam rocket ship uh, craft to make. So please come back to Michael's and, and visit us. And make sure to tag uh, any posts that your guardians or parents or older siblings post on social media with hashtag make it with Michaels and tag at Elmer's products so we can see everything you guys did. And that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much again. And thank you to Michaels for having us. We had an awesome time and hope to see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks, everyone.